Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Champion Connections. This is episode 11. I'm your host, Chris Coleman. Now, today's guest hails from my lovely city, Philadelphia, and his name is Charles Smith. We actually went to middle school together. This gentleman started his first business when he was 14. 14. Actually, He's one of the reasons I decided to go into business for myself because I said if he can do it, I can do it. Now a little bit about Charles is by trade he is a videographer and a recent photographer as well as he maintains and owns a computer repair business. So without further ado, Charles Smith, enjoy. I knew you were going to miss this one. Yeah, my name is Charles Smith, and uh, I'm a wedding videographer and photographer. So this is one business that I have for myself, and then I have a second business in the field of uh, computer repair and tech and repair of other technologies. So that's what I've been doing, and uh, it's something I really enjoy doing. It's 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 really fun, and it pays well. Yeah, that that sounds like the best of both worlds. So Charles, for those who don't know, how old are you? Uh, I just turned 20, actually, this past Saturday, so it's been a few days. Oh, happy belated. Thank you. So, um, if I'm correct, you started your first business, the videographer business, when you were 14, right? Yes, yes. So, were you always gung-ho about entrepreneurship, or did this just happen? Like, Honestly, uh, to, be honest, uh, to be honest, no, I actually wasn't always into it. Actually, I never even thought of the idea of entrepreneurship. I always thought it was above my reach. So, pretty much, really, I just was kind of one of those people that just wanted to do actually a nine to five when I was a younger person, because pretty much all I wanted to do was to make money when I was younger. So when I was about twelve and thirteen, actually, um, pretty much, yeah, I just wanted a nine to five. I wanted to make some money. For sure. But what I realized at that point, um, getting a job was easier said than done, partly because of the economy. Uh, when it, when it was the economic downturn of 2007, and also because of my age, so uh, when times were hard and I really wanted to to make money, um, my dad had passed when I was seven. So I was 14. I was the only child. My mom was struggling and uh, on limited income. I really wanted to find a way so I could you know get the things I needed and the things I liked. So being turned down from so many jobs because of my age and because of the economy. I realized that there was something I always liked doing. I always liked doing video. I always liked filming, I liked doing video editing and photography. And so, um, actually, I just thought about, you know, why don't I make this a business? And so, at that point, I was just charging about ten dollars, twenty dollars here for, for wedding videos on <laughs> VHS cassette. And then um, I just happened to browse the web as I got more tech savvy, and I was thinking to myself, wow, I could be charging way more than this. I could be making what an average person makes during the week off of one day's work of videography. So that's when I decided to uh, start working for myself in this regard to make money. And so it's the best decision I ever made. And starting at 14, though, I figured, you know, maybe at that point, this wasn't something that, actually at that point, I wasn't really serious about video. I was still at that point doing it as a hobby. So really, honestly, coming into the idea of, uh, entrepreneurship really did hit me until about maybe actually a few months ago uh, the last years of the last few months of when I was 19 probably about in May at that point I was still applying for jobs between 2011 and a few months ago I was applying for jobs while I was in college and uh, it was getting frustrating because at that time I had, I was old enough I was applying to all types of jobs left and right and I couldn't seem to get anything. Like, I would even I would start applying to tech companies, and then also I would apply to jobs I didn't really want to do, like yeah, for uh, sure. fast food, menial tasks, even even janitorial. I couldn't qualify for. So it was like I was always getting these resumes, just you know, pu- pushing them out, and then I was either getting non-response uh, from. Uh, the, the employers, and or every time I called, I wouldn't get a response. Or later, months later, after I even forgot about the job, they would say, "You know, you didn't get it." So I was starting to get depressed in there, and I was getting fed up. And then, actually, just a few months ago was when I really uh, started, you know, 
spearheading this. You know, I made I made more flyers. Uh, I made uh, I was really aggressive in my approach towards advertising. So I would say, even though I started this at fourteen, it wasn't until about just about three months ago, about maybe like six years later, where I was like, yeah, this is something I really need to be doing. For sure, to supporting myself. And uh, it's the best decision I ever made in May. I stopped complaining about my situation, about unemployment, and I decided to do something about it. And so I never felt better. This is an awesome decision that I made. That's that's awful. That's awesome, man. Like, very powerful. I know some people, you go on Facebook, and they're always complaining, I can't get this, I can't get that. But, like, if you just take the time to see what your situation is, where you want to go, and actually do something... Usually, life will begin to give you these things that you want. Yeah, and it wasn't easy. I must admit, it wasn't. It wasn't easy because I had a lot of. I had a lot of. Well, it was. It wasn't as serious as opposition, but I had just a lot of kind of like naysayers. I had people, you know, relatives that were saying, you know, that this isn't. This is really isn't a good idea. I need something more consistent. But I was saying, maybe so. Maybe it would be better to have something more consistent. But. Uh, circumstances just aren't leading me that way. So I was like, in the meantime, I, I have to do something to, to, to uh, support myself. And, For sure. Uh, so far, this turned out just not as a mean to support myself, but this is also my livelihood. This is what I enjoy doing. For so sure. I had a lot of people saying, just keep putting out the apps. Don't get discouraged. But in the meantime, it's like, it's like I'm striving after the wind. Um, I'm very religious. So in Psalms, I mean, the book of either Psalms or Solomon, Proverbs, they talk about striving after the wind. So that's basically like being and doing things in vain. So that's how it felt, you know, for me. I was putting out all these apps, not getting anything back. And I, and at the process, I was not making money, but spending sleepless nights, just sending out apps. And, like, and so this, I just started this business, just a matter of a few weeks advertising. Then people start calling me. I made more money in a week than I was sending out apps all together. And like, um, and, you know, in, in months. And then another thing that was a problem was like when I was always, um, I had relatives actually that worked in certain departments. Like I had some that were in human resources, and I had some that had uh, friends that were that like had like positions like of employment that could actually pull applications. And sometimes that wasn't even that wasn't even hitting it. That wasn't even. Uh, coming to fruition. Some of them was like, you still need this qualification and that one. I already had it, but they were like, you know, you need a previous job. You know, you needed certain experience before that. And I kept thinking to myself, how am I going to get that experience if, you know, no one, gives, no one gives me that chance? Exactly. Like, one, one, one problem was when I applied to, uh, I applied to, uh, actually, uh, um, several places. But I applied one in, in particular that was kind of Disappointing was when I applied to a fast food place. And when I applied there, what happened was, um, the person was like, uh, you know, we see you're in Penn State, you're going to school for information technology and art. He was like, uh, we don't think this is the job for you. But I'm thinking to myself, a job is a job, you know. I'm willing to take whatever's going to help me support myself. And he's like, did you work at a Wendy's or something before that? And I said, no, unfortunately I didn't. And he's like, well, we don't, we can't use it, and this was upsetting because they got me all the way to the second interview to tell me that. So I like, I wasted a lot of time because I was doing other things. So you, you know, uh, this is obviously the only road you go. If you can't get hired at McDonald's, like no offense yeah, to McDonald's. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, come on, this is this is like the butt end of jokes all the time. People, there are plenty of people who were working at McDonald's that really hate it, and they don't want to admit that they work there. So I'm like, I'm actually crawling. I'm like, kind of like on my knees, so to speak wanting to apply to you. And then I get turned down from here. I'm like, this is ridiculous. So I need to do something about it. Yeah. So when I really put my foot down. So obviously you've experienced uh, a lot of failures and yeah. people doubting you, um, people not saying, not believing in you. How can you say that you've been able to keep um, your positive mentality and just continue to build your business, build yourself, and just move forward? Well, um, I should be a lot of that to, to uh, you know, the atmosphere I was raised around. I always had a positive, you know, outlook on things. And uh, my dad was a positive person, even though he had passed when I was seven. He had died from uh, cancer and esophagus. 
but I do remember him well. My memory is pretty extensive. I can remember back to when I was four. So at that point, I mean, he was really great role model for me, and I had a lot of uh, I had a lot of support from my mom, you know. And so uh, my my religious upbringing, I think, has helped me too, definitely. You know, being one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I always I always am, uh, you know relying on God, and I've been praying to you know my God Jehovah. So I think about that, and so I, that helps me keep through a lot of things, and then you know. You know, just doing that, and then and then putting putting forth the effort. You know, you know, working in harmony with my prayers. See, I don't believe that I'm just going. You know, I'm going to pray and just get everything I want stuff falling right in my lap. I got to work hard. I got to work along with it, and then you know, God will see a way. For yeah. sure, for sure. All right, so 14, you started your videography business. Um, you didn't just wake up one day and say, "Hey, I'm super talented at taking videos." So what did you do for people that are looking to get into this field, uh, people that are looking... Because you also taught yourself photography in, like, three weeks. Yeah. So, like, what can you say you've done to be able to learn by doing? Because, obviously, you weren't perfect. If you watch your old videos, I'm sure they are pretty bad in comparison to what yeah, you do I didn't now. Yeah, like In fact, I had to remove them from my website. <laughs> I was like, this pales in comparison to what I did recently. Yeah, so... Um, well, actually, as I was saying, I had an extensive memory. Back to when I was four, actually, was when I got my first video game. Now, at that point, I didn't want to become a videographer. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I was only four years old. So my aunt bought me a video camera when I was four from Target. No, I'm sorry, Toys R Us, rather. So it was like a little black and white camera you put up into your VCR. So uh, at that point, I couldn't put it down. I liked seeing myself on TV. That was phenomenal to me. And at that point, I just kept filming things. I would film little talk shows with me. And it just talking about whatever random stuff that maybe a six-year-old would do or somebody older than a six-year-old. So it wasn't until I was about eight years old where my mom was like, you know, maybe I should buy, you know, my son an even better camera. So at eight was a real turning point for me. That was actually when I got a prosumer level camera. And it was about $300 at the time. It wasn't a high-end camera, but it was still pretty pricey for an eight-year-old. For sure. You know, a $300 camera. 2001, yeah. That Everybody's, was tape. we're playing you know, PlayStation 2. You're getting a camera, like. I know, right? So, <laughs> I know, most kids was into video games. I always, my talent was video. And uh, so I would always film myself doing little events. I would film in middle school, film little things like that. And then I would say, yeah, about about 12 was when uh, I started bringing my camcorder to film special events. And so 14 was when I was, you know, I became more serious about it. And then I started putting them on DVD instead of just little cassettes. And so from that point on, that's when I moved on to uh, founding, you know, Charles Smith Video Productions. So you gradually, obviously, built upon your skills just by simply trying things out. Yeah, and I was having fun. So when I was doing that, I was just, I was just thinking to myself, I mean, this is fun, and I, I never realized until years later looking on the internet that, you know, this is a job that can really pay well. And, I, and basically you can make your own prices and people will pay you based on what you want them to pay. For sure. As long as you have good quality work that, you know, they like. For sure. All right, I have another question for you. Camera equipment is not cheap. Um, and you, obviously, the last few months you've been really dedicated into your craft. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember we had a conversation where you were saying how you were pretty much leveraging the system in order to get the equipment you need, knowing yeah. that you can pay things off. Can you talk about how you pretty much did everything you could within your power to to get the things you needed? Because uh, a 17-year-old having the type of camera that you have, like, that's, that's, a, computer, right? yeah, that, that's a lot of money. And the hard drives, like, that's like $350 just for the hard drive. So how did, how did you make that happen? Yeah. It wasn't easy. I must say, between the ages of 18 and just last year, being, you know, 19, I, I would say, like, a lot of great things have happened in that time. But being 18, no, I couldn't wait till I turned 18, because that's really when things have worked for the best. Because at that point, I, uh, I had to buy things on credit, actually. So that's actually how I was doing it. But long story short, when I bought my Apple iMac for video editing, I couldn't I couldn't get approved for credit. And that, that really was a disappointment, because... Um, 
Yeah, I didn't have a, I didn't have like eighteen hundred dollars in my pocket. I did. I never could save up like two thousand dollars because I always spent it halfway before <laughs> something else. So basically, what happened was um, that along with my camcorder, uh, when I went to uh, college and I attended Penn State, I had a a student refund check. So I used that, and that I think that was a blessing. Now I didn't just splurge and um, just blow all of that on equipment. What happened was I'm very savvy at ordering things online. So even though the student refund check is, you know, meant for things for Penn State or, or school, whatever school you go to, um, I bought books, definitely. I bought all the books, all my supplies, but I bought them on uh, online. I bought them on different retailers. So that has helped me to save a substantial lot of money because, to be honest, school bookstores can charge a ton of money for books that you can get for like 50% off, 60% or more. Sure, for sure. So that's how I saved money. I had a lump sum of a refund check my uh, freshman year of college, and it was enough to buy books, and I had a whole lot left over to buy an iMac. So as soon as I found that money was on, it was in my account, I quickly called the first day I was in college. Once I heard the balance, I hung up right away, ran to the library's computer <laughs> in college, and I went online, and I quickly bought the Apple iMac, the huge screen you could buy, the largest hard drive, all the memory that you can get. And this is the best decision I made. In fact, I'm, I'm talking from that computer as we speak. And what's amazing, I had this thing almost had this thing almost two and a half years now, and I hadn't had to do any upgrades to it. And that's what it's a powerful computer. I hadn't had to do any tweaking so far. Still running like new. And the same applies for the camcorder. The camcorder, yeah, I didn't have this fifteen hundred dollars lying around to start out with. So I bought that too from uh, some of the money that I had left over. And as far as the other things, I was able to get approved for credit once I was a college student. So that's how that worked out in my regard. So um, I guess how did you balance school and working your business at the same time? Well, uh, for the most part, since I did a lot of wedding videography, basically that's what I specialize in, that, that would occur during the summer. So it would interfere with my classes. And I chose not to take summer classes for college because that was just going to fry my brain. That was going to overwhelm me. <laughs> some kids are very good. Some students are just very good at working all along, like straight through the clock. I mean, straight through the year. But so I wanted, I wanted my two and a half months off. So For sure, for sure. So that's what I did. So it, it didn't overlap usually because most weddings were in July when I was off for great. Fair now, enough. one though... Out of all the ones I did, one was in March, and that that was stressful. But fortunately, I was able to get it done in the time frame I had stated. For sure. So, seeing that you started a business at fourteen, I remember back in middle school, you always kind of like stood out because you were just like a little different from everybody else. Not yeah. a, not in a bad way. I know what you mean. But like, how did how did you know growing up, you're so far ahead of everyone because you got like an old soul, man, like. Um, how did you, I guess, continue to, to pursue your ambitions and passions and surround yourself with, like, the type of people that you wanted to be surrounded by? I don't know. I mean, like, I guess just because I like art. You know, I really love art. I like creativity, you know. And I guess that's what that's what led me to do that, you know, being into um, drawing. I've been drawing since, I was, since as long as I can remember. And uh, I always like, you know, just being the best I could be with that, because I'm not really athletic, you know, stuff like that, like, you know, most people that I know are, so I was like, this is my way to shine this way, you know, I can shine with, with photos, taking pictures, video, and at that point, though, it was art, it wasn't until, you know, when I was 14, and I really became serious about photography and video. For sure. So how do you, uh, how do you go about getting your first client? Because that's a, a lot of people who start these businesses. Yeah, it's hard to get a do, business. Do all that. And you being so young, I, I don't know if you were taking very seriously. So how did you get your first client? Well, what happened was, yeah, um, say in 2007, when I was 14, uh, my aunt actually had uh, a lot of input in that. She had a co-worker that I uh, worked with her in her department. And she said that uh, my nephew is really good at editing videos. Now, at that point, I did have some sample work to show her. That was when I was trying my hand at uh, 
different editing software from when I was in middle school. So basically, you know, they said, yeah, we'll give him a chance. And so at that point, too, I had low prices, too. I just charged whatever was at the top of my head. I think I was like $20. <laughs> and they said, we'll keep giving you more money if you need it. So then I did keep asking, and, you know, until I realized I felt guilty for just keep asking, like, any time. So I just would keep asking until I was done, and then when I felt this was enough. So I think I made about maybe 120 or $200 off of that. Man, that's a steal. Yeah, so, I mean, that was good for my first, you know, wedding done on software, done on a disc. And they, they actually really liked it. So, and then from that point on, so basically from that point on, um, I went on to do a family members. And then from then, it branched on into uh, non-family members. I mean, people I just completely had not even met in my life. So how that was able to come about was through word of mouth. Once they saw these relatives... Then the relatives showed it to their friends, and then friends of other friends showed it, and then we put it online with their permission. So that's how I was able to uh, get it first. So, you know, family members did have an impact on that. It just takes one person, and then it can just spread out like that. Sure. You're just leveraging what yeah. you had at your advantage, what you had around you. Do you have a, a mentor or anyone that you, uh, I guess, either that you've met personally or that you've you know, looked up online, researched, tried to emulate them, um, or did it, this is, you know, I just Googled everything, learned what I had to do, failed here and there. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, the latter, which you mentioned, yeah. I just Googled a lot of things. I had a lot of, you know, different success. I wouldn't say I really had much failure. I just had, like, you know, just imperfection, you know, just small little things. So, you know, like the lighting was off, the video was too dark and grainy, camera was shaky stuff like that, but they still had their moments and stuff. The video kind of, in the way of little flaws, well, they can be major if, you know, you're, you're really trying to go professional, but, you know, in the, in the scheme of things with the flaws, it, the video would sometimes look like uh, stuff that, you know, a person would do on a home movie camera. You know, like your, your, your close uncle or family member. Yeah, for sure. So it just looked like an amateur video, something somebody just took and filmed just randomly. At, at points, not the whole video, of course. But, so that's what I had. had so how did how did you go about, like, say there was a part in the video um, where it was like that. How did you, at such a young age, have to explain that to a grown person? This is, like, their special moment in life. Uh, and it's your job to capture this. I guess, how did well, you be, build yourself up to be able to explain that to somebody? Um, well, honestly, uh they didn't ask me, honestly, about that. I mean, I felt bad about it, but a lot of them didn't ask, why is this shaking, why is that shaking? So it wasn't until later after I watched a lot of sample videos on YouTube, I knew what I had to do. But they were happy because I guess a lot of the editing and special effects and, you know, music overlays and things like that more than made up for it. So I had, you know, different color effects and titling. And then as I got older a few years later, if that problem was to occur, I was able to overcome that. I was able to straighten that out before they even saw that. You know, my my knowledge increased to the fact that I was able to find ways to overlay the video with other other video so that shakiness that might occur or something missed might be able to uh, probably might be able to address. For sure, yeah, for yeah. sure. So that's how I overcame that. Alright, so we were talking before about the photography, how you recently just started that. Um, can you talk about how you took advantage of an opportunity that you have no experience doing and uh, just, I guess, leveraged it? Because some people are afraid when an opportunity is presented to them that they have no experience doing. They say no or they doubt themselves. But you said, yeah, got a camera, and you're taking some awesome photos, by the way. Thank you. So how did, how did, how did I guess, talk, can you talk about taking opportunities that, are, that come your way? Yeah, so um, basically what happened was um, how, you know, I really don't want to turn down any opportunity as long, you know, if it, if it means making money, you know, as long as it doesn't go against you know, my religious beliefs, you know, my moral fiber. I wanted to take advantage of it. I was just thinking, what happens traditionally, I, I believe that when it comes to a person that's good at video, since it's not always needed as much as taking photos, people kind of view those interchangeably. Yeah. So... What happened is, every time I just wanted to specialize in video, somebody was always saying, can you do photo then? Because they always, you know, it's still a camera pretty much. 
and I always shrugged my shoulders. I was like, yeah, I'll do this. And sometimes I turned it down. I was like, but you know, this time I was like, I can't afford to let, you know, these opportunities pass me by, especially not this summer when I was, you know, reeling because of problems that I was suffering from because of not being able to find work. I was like, any opportunity that comes from this point on, I'm going to take it. So, yeah, what happened was um, one, a person that, uh, that goes to uh, my congregation, they had referred me to uh, someone they knew that was getting married. And they said, this kid does really good work. And so then he's, uh, he on, told, in turn told me that uh, I should be receiving a call soon from someone that's interested in having photos. So they asked me, can I do photo? So now getting that call, it, it really took a lot of mental preparation, you know, preparation on what I'm going to say. Because I didn't want to just say something like, yeah, I've never get photo before, but I'm really good at video. So how I was able to address that so I didn't scare them, you know, or make them intimidated. I said, yeah, I definitely can do photo. I said that uh, I specialize in video, but um, traditionally most people don't ask me for photo. But if, if needed to do photo, I can definitely do it. <laughs> so the challenge came when they came over. It was like, uh, do you have anything in the way of wedding photography? So I didn't, though. But fortunately, they still gave me the chance. So what I had to show them to lead them on was when I used, uh, I had forgot that in my arsenal I had a lot of things from about maybe four or five years ago to present. I forgot that I had been teaching myself Photoshop. So I, a lot of my pictures on social networking sites like MySpace, Facebook, and Instagram were always uh, touched up on Photoshop and always added with uh, special fancy effects. So, you know, I didn't despair. I said, uh, I was honest with them. I said, no, I don't have any wedding photography, but I have plenty of pictures of me. And so they, they enjoyed them, actually. So, yeah, I had a lot of Photoshop photos. They didn't, they didn't look crazy. I mean, <laughs> things like black and white effects, vignettes, uh, photo effects when one object's in color while the rest is in black and white. So that pretty much impressed them. Um, I did a photo shoot uh, with uh, a classmate of mine. Uh, one of their uh, brothers had a, a vehicle that I really liked. They had a Mercury Marauder. So we took pictures like that. And so I was able to do photo effects with that a year ago. So basically, you know, I showed them everything that I had. And so they were convinced from there that, you know, if he's good at video and he's good at really putting time into his profile pictures when other people don't really care about you know, editing a profile pic, you know, we could use them. So I was really glad they gave me that chance because all I need is just one opportunity to do photography, and I know from then on it'll be, you know, so much easier. Sure. So how many have you had now? Because I see a few different pictures on on my timeline, mm -hmm. and your business is now officially changed to audio, I mean to video photography. and photography. Um, so how many... Photography weddings have you done now? Well, okay. so far I only have one, but I have two more on the way. Okay. Uh, I have one coming up August second, then I have one coming up in uh, have one coming, I believe, I think two weeks after, as well as well as video. So well, I think I would say about June twenty second was when my was when our uh, business really started to get you know, busy with me when when uh. My former uh, library instructor from you know middle school, you know he he last minute you know asked me could I do a video for uh, for this couple that wanted just you know wedding videography for sure. So pretty much if you count on it, when you think about uh, I had uh, that one June twenty second, I had video June thirtieth, and then I have two more on the way. So I I pretty much had four to do. So that's just four videos in itself. So I have four videos I'm doing, and I have uh, three photography assignments in all. Two of which hadn't happened yet, but they will. They're going to come up, you know, in three weeks. So, sure. so I've been pretty busy. So that's a total of um, seven seven projects going so far. Three of which I'm I'm in the process of working on now. That's that is completely awesome, man. Congrats. I know. I, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, because the two of the last two that I, you know, that that I had gotten, that was actually uh, upon request, made upon request within the last week, week and a half, and so that's that's pretty amazing. Because I, I was just I was just elated over the fact that I had two weddings just done this year. Because last year, I mean, last year, I mean, well, for the last couple of years, I've been only getting one video a year. Yeah. 
if that. You know, sometimes I had I had years when there was no video to do. But now, I mean, I went from like one or to none a year to like five, seven. It was very satisfying. Have you have you fi- found that uh well two questions have you found that one your age has been a factor uh, when it comes to business and how did you I guess I don't want to say master but how did you become a better negotiator? Um, to be honest, actually age hasn't been a, a problem for me um, in that regard because uh actually I don't know uh, but I feel as though a lot of people they actually feel they actually think I'm older than what I am. I don't know whether it's just my facial appearance. But I've been told, though, in my congregation that it's just the way I carry myself, my conduct. I mean, they said, this kid doesn't act like the rest, you know. So I always, I feel as though uh, my mind was always just, you know, a few years ahead of my actual age. For sure, for sure. I was always viewed as someone maybe three or four years older than what I really was, starting out about age 12. And I guess that's probably because of when I started shaving. I actually had to shave at 12. That's insane. Even with a clean shave, people still perceive me as older. Some think... You know, I'm the same age as my mom. They think I'm her sibling. Some people just, you know, it's funny. So pretty much people never, you know, age has never been a factor. In fact, with this with, with this type of business I'm doing, they just pretty much look at the work. You know, they look at the work. And, uh, you know, I always had the height. And I just had, you know, the stature for it. And so, you know, they always looked at that, which was a great thing. Cool. So. What about negotiating? How have you become better uh, at that? Oh well, yeah, that was that was a hard lesson I learned. Yeah, negotiating was something I really had to learn quickly because sometimes I found myself losing out on um, on a lot of uh, prospective clients, and also sometimes I felt my, felt myself cutting myself short, so to speak, like I'm selling myself short. Basically, there's been times where I made it made a price too low, and I could have got more. And I'm like, okay, we'll go to and then I. Look online how much I could be charged for this. I'm like banging my head on the desk. I'm like, damn, I could have got more. And then, yeah, I faced the dilemma sometimes. Yeah, I, I uh, people just kind of went away because he's like, this price is too high. And so then I was thinking later, I tried to call them back saying we can work something out. And sometimes it kind of had already been resolute and made their mind up and yeah. using someone else. For sure. So how I overcame that, um, you know, it took a lot of, it took, you know, a lot of times that things didn't work out. So, I've learned it early in the game. I would say about maybe two years of people saying this price is too high or uh, or just, you know, getting me and then finding out they got more. I had to do a lot of research, you know. So that's what I basically did. I think the key to my success so far is keeping the prices relatively lower than the competition but offering more than, you know, what what the uh, competitors offer. For sure. So I adjusted my price so that it won't be, you know, too low, you know, but it won't, it won't be, you know, astronomically high. Yeah. So that's how I overcame that. All right. So I know we're running out of time. I don't want to keep you from your projects too much, but let people know, let people know where they can find you, man. Uh, if they're looking to get a proposal on you, um, the websites you have, Facebook, MySpace, whatever you're on. Okay. Yeah. You can, uh, Definitely look me up, uh, charlesmithvideo.webs.com. And also, you can check my Facebook page out, uh, Charles Smith Photo and Video Productions. So, that's definitely where you can find me. You can see a lot of my sample photos and videos there. So, if you're ever interested, you know, definitely check it out. So, I do more than weddings as well. Weddings and, and uh, receptions. And, you know, other things that you might need too. I just put that down on the site, you know. To really in the most uh, customers. For sure, man. Well, Charles, it was a pleasure talking with you. You truly are a champion. Um, I hope you continue to do, I know you'll continue to do great things. And uh, I, like I tell you this all the time, you actually starting your business was one of the reasons why I started my businesses. Thank you. And so, man, just keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep doing right, what you're you. doing. So, I, Charles, I remember at the beginning of our conversation, we talked about, uh, well, you mentioned that you have a second business uh, where you repair computers and various technology. How did that start? Well, that actually started uh, about when, I, I would say about, I was probably uh, maybe 13 or 12 with that as well. Um, what happened in that regard 
I got my first computer because aside from with the video business, I needed a, you know a computer that was good at handling things such as you know high end video, HD, For sure, and, uh, good audio and effects. So pretty much what happened was. Um, my aunt bought me this computer. I mean, I had a computer for a long time, since I was six. But the particular computer I had, I mean, it was getting old. It was from 95. So my aunt got a new one. And I just thought any new computer would do it. So she went to uh, you know, a store and bought uh, a compact Versario. And uh, it was only it was on sale for three ninety eight, And I just was elated. I thought that was the best thing ever. So pretty much it was slow when I got it. it Windows this that just came out at the time, which was a big flaw. So it was terrible. The computer was slow. I, I mean, I thought that any new computer would handle it. So a few day, hours later, um, I went and I tried to unscrew the computer to see what was going on with it because I read that I need more memory. I need, you know, better operating system, processor. So my aunt came over and she was like, Charles, what are you doing? She, she scared me because I didn't know she was there. She saw me unscrewing the computer and I've never did that before. So I took that apart. So I looked at everything I needed, and eventually I sold that computer, and then um, a neighbor, it was nice of him, he actually bought me a much better computer, he bought me a higher end computer, he bought me an HP uh, Pavilion when he saw what I was trying to do. So it, it was a, a neighbor that lived across from me, so that was that was really nice of him. It had a TV uh, media center, it had everything in it, and uh, it could uh, run special labels on a disc. And uh, from that point on, computers were fascinating. You know, I took that apart. It just turned out to be a pain. I was just trying to figure out how to straighten out something. And so at that point, I was like, you know, I could use this. You know, I could, I could actually have fun doing this. So, you know, one thing led to another. I got my computer straightened out, and then I still was, you know, hunger. I had hunger and thirst for, for knowledge of technology. For sure. So then I, I delved into the Internet realm, the web realm. When I found I needed more than one computer because uh, my mom needed one when she was going to community college, so then I taught myself networking. So I did that all without the help of the local ISP, Internet Service Provider. And uh, from then on, I just kept, you know, delving into you know, knowledge, self-help books, and then just trial and error. So you are obviously someone who really learns by doing, yeah. mastering video, photography. And technology. So where where is that? Uh, is that company still in existence today? Like, do you still do that? Now, that one, I actually didn't think of doing computer repair at that point. I would say about um, maybe for that, maybe about uh, two thousand eight or two, between two thousand eight or two thousand nine was when I decided to, to make a company out of that. And so uh, I'm in the process of rebranding with that because I haven't given it much attention as much as I have. With, Wedding videography, like I don't have any outright pricing and uh, everything established yet with that because I've been, you know, back and forth with this for video editing and then school. But uh, yeah, I start. I, it's still, it's still very much uh, uh, active. So a lot of, a lot of uh, assignments and tasks my clients need me to do is virus removal. I do uh, system restore. I make sure all their uh, files are back in order. Adding memory. Adding a hard drive, letting them know whether it's worth it to keep their computer and upgrade, and, or uh, you know, toss it out or resell it. So that's also how that's you know how I've been running my business. So, yes. so where where can they find this business at? Uh, is there a way to contact you in regards to that? My other company is called Chuck the Tech Doctor. So it would be chuckthetechdoctor.webs.com. And if you can't, you know. You remember that or something? You can go to you know charlesmithvideo.webs.com and uh, you can know, contact me and I can send you the link. So that's another one I'm in the process of working on. The so, doctor's in the yeah. house. Okay. So once again, man, I thank you. I'm sorry yeah. for all the the mix hats and the pushing backs of the times, but we got it done. We got it done, yeah. man. Yeah. So you stay blessed. You stay yeah. beautiful, and. I'll be Thanks. looking looking forward to seeing more of your work. Thank you. All right, awesome. man. Cool. Later. Okay. Right. Later. Thank you. So, video, photography, tech. He can do it all, ladies and gentlemen. If you're looking for any of those three services, and why not just come to one man? He's the one-stop shop. Uh, help a young man out. Support, you know, everything he's doing. Um, 
And like, can, like I said, continue just being a role model, man, because you're doing awesome stuff.